Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on angle and line relationships. What you'll learn is how to examine relationships between pairs of angles and how to examine relationships of angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal. So angle pairs can be classified by the relationships. When two lines intersect, they form two pairs of opposite angles called vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. And so we can see two intersecting lines. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and they're vertical. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, and they are vertical. And as you can see here in our symbols column, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And as we look for the symbol here, it's an equal sign with a little squiggly kind of thing on top, and I'll try that one more time here. It's not coming across very clear. There it goes. Equal sign with a little squiggly on top um, is our symbol for congruent. Now, two angles that have the same vertex between them share a common sign and do not overlap are called adjacent angles. And so here you can see we have the same vertex, B. They share the common side here and they're not overlapping. So here's angle 5 and angle 6, and these are adjacent. And so you can see the measure of angle ABC, with B being the vertex, so A to B to C. You could also call it CBA, but ABC is equal to the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 6. Now, two of our biggies. If the sum of the measures of two angles is 90 degrees, then the angles are called complementary angles. That is a relationship for this pair. So you can see the right angle here. Angle 7 and angle 8 form together 90 degrees. So 7 plus measure of angle 8 is 90, which means they are complementary. Compared to if the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees, the angles are called supplementary angles. Now they don't necessarily have to be adjacent to be complementary or supplementary. These complementary angles are adjacent. These here are not. So you kind of have to picture in your head, alright, if angle 10 and angle 9 were adjacent, would I form a 180 degree angle? Yes, you would. And so that's key to know that they don't necessarily have to be adjacent to be complementary or supplementary. In our first example, Jeanne is cutting a piece of rectangular tile. Classify the relationship between angle A and angle B. And if I redraw on this here, I'll have angle A here and then angle B here. And by me redrawing on these, you can almost, they're almost now touching. They weren't quite adjacent before, but now they kind of are. And when you put these together, what's, what's going on here? Well, it looks like they form a right angle here. They together add up to 90 degrees. And so if they add up to 90 degrees, this would be an example of complementary angles. And please don't abbreviate too much on these. Just write complementary or complementary angles. I do not want to see anyone writing C. It's a C. And that's not the relationship. The relationship is complementary angles. So let's make sure we do that correctly. Now, if the measure of angle A equals 53 degrees, what is the measure of angle B? Well, we know since they're complementary that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B are going to add up to a sum of 90 degrees. And if the measure of angle A is 53 degrees, then 53 degrees plus the measure of angle B is going to equal 90 degrees. And it looks just like an equation. It smells just like an equation. So we're going to solve it just like an equation where we're going to subtract the 53 from both sides and have a result that our measure of angle B is equal to 37 degrees. 
Next, we have a pair of definitions, parallel lines and transversal. Now for parallel lines, this, these are two lines in a plane that never intersect. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more other lines in a plane. And as our textbook says, when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, special pairs of angles are congruent. So we have some special angle relationships here. When a transversal intersects two parallel lines, eight angles are formed. And you can see angle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Interior angles lie inside the parallel lines. So inside the parallel lines would be this red area. And so inside the parallel lines we have angles 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those are interior angles. Exterior angles lie outside the parallel lines. So we have our space outside these parallel lines. So our, our angles 1, 2, 7, and 8 are exterior angles. Now the following pairs of angles are congruent. Alternate interior angles are on opposite sides of the transversal and inside the parallel lines. So for our alternate interior angles, they are on opposite sides of the transversal, so angles like 3 and 5, or angles like 4 and six are on opposite sides of the transversal inside the parallel lines. Those are alternate interior angles. So the angles three and five and angles four and six are congruent to each other. So four and six are congruent, three and five are congruent. Now, alternate exterior angles are on opposite sides of the transversal and outside the parallel lines. So we have 1 and 7 that are on opposite sides of the transversal on the outside of the parallel lines. Same with 2 and 8. Opposite sides of the transversal on the outside of the parallel lines. And so 1 and 7 are congruent. 2 and 8 are congruent. Now lastly, we have that of corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are in the same position on parallel lines in relation to the transversal. And so we have 1 and 5 are both on that top left of the, their angle sets. So those are corresponding and are equal. 2 and 6 you can almost picture on the top right then we could have 3 and 7. And lastly, then, we could have 4 and 8. Notice how, kind of remove the colors here, the two greens are on the top left, so those are congruent. The two reds are top right, those are congruent. The two blues, bottom right, congruent. The two pinks, bottom left, also congruent. So those are the three angle relationships that we can use when we have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal. So next, we get to classify the relationship between angles 9 and 13. So let's look now for angle 9 and angle 13. And if we ignore some of the clutter up here, we don't need that right now. You can hopefully notice then we have these two parallel lines 
that are cut by a transversal here. And when we look at our three relationships, alternate interior angles would require both angles to be on the inside of the parallel lines. Well, we don't have that here. Alternate exterior angles would be both angles on the outsides. Well, we don't have that here either. One's on the inside, one's on the outside. And so they're both, though, if you kind of think about top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, they're both in that top left position of these sets. And so because of that, we can say that these are corresponding angles. And so next, if the measure of angle 13 is 75 degrees, find the measure of angle 11 and 15. Well, let's start now with the measure of angle 11. What is the relationship between 13 and 11? Well, they're both on the inside. They're both on opposite sides of the transversal. So between measure angle 11 and measure of angle 13, these are alternate interior angles. And if they're alternate interior angles, that means they are congruent. And so measure of angle 11 is going to be 75 degrees. What about now the next one, which is the measure of angle 15? Well, here's the measure of angle 15. And now, actually, we can use vertical angles Notice they share a vertex here, do 13 and 15, and they're on the opposite sides of two intersecting lines, so we can actually use vertical angles here. Because the measure of angle 11 is now going to equal the measure of angle 15, so the measure of angle 15 is equal to, as well, 75 degrees. And so you can do a lot of cool things with these. I mean, notice that 13 and 9 must both be 75 degrees because they're corresponding. We already said that 11 was 75 degrees. We already know that 15 is 75 degrees. And so now what if, what if you wanted to find the measure of angle 12? Well, we would need to ask ourselves, what is the relationship between 11 and 12? Or even 9 and 12? Well, whether you're looking at 11 and 12 or 9 and 12, those are supplementary. So you could use supplementary angles to help you solve. So you could take 180 minus 75 degrees to have a result of 105 degrees. So the measure of angle 12 is equal to 105 degrees. And once you know that, you can solve in a variety of ways. You could say, all right, 10 and 12 are vertical, so 10 is 105 degrees. Then you could say, well, 12 and 14 are alternate exterior angles, and those are congruent, so that's 105 degrees. And then you could use alternate interior between 10 and 16 to say that 16 is 105 degrees. Or you could have used vertical. The key is there are a lot of different ways for solving the insides and outsides of these parallel line examples. You'll use a variety of alternate interior, alternate exterior, vertical, and supplementary. 
In our last example of the lesson, angles DEF and WXY are complementary angles with the measure of angle DEF equaling 2x degrees and the measure of WXY equaling 3x minus 20 degrees. Find the value of x. What's true about complementary angles? We know that the measure of angle DEF plus the measure of angle W X Y need to add up to be 90 degrees. That's the definition of the complementary angles. And so if DEF is 2X and WXY is 3X minus 20, we can set up an equation and solve. Now we can group like terms here with the 2X and the 3X to have 5X minus 20 equals 90. And we can solve for x. Add 20 to both sides. This cancels. And we're left with 5x equals 110. Finish by dividing by 5 on both sides. And x is going to equal 22. But that's just the value of x. What about the actual measures of angle DEF? and WXY. Well, DEF is equal to 2X degrees. So I can take 2 times the 22 to get 44 degrees. And WXY is equal to 3X minus 20 degrees. And so I could take 3 times 22 and subtract 20. 66 minus 20 is 46 degrees. And so DEF is 44 degrees. And WXY is equal to 46 degrees. And a cool way to check this, if I take 44 plus 46, I get 90 degrees, which is the definition of complementary angles. And that is it for this lesson on angle and line relationships. Good luck.